What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over 5 of the best phones you can use on Metro's network at this point in 2023. Now if you do end up wanting to learn more about any of these phones individually, be sure to check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So up first, we got the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. Now, as you can probably tell by the name, this is the successor to the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G that came out around last year at this time. So this phone did come out pretty recently, and from what I've seen so far, I would definitely say it's a worthy successor. With the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, we're getting a 6.4 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED display. We got a 1080p resolution, so great image quality overall, and a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio as well. So while it's definitely not the biggest display out there, in general, I do think it is a really good size, and overall, whether you're consuming a lot of content or maybe doing more simple things like web browsing, social media, stuff like that, no matter what, if you are looking for an affordable 5G phone that has a really nice display, you're definitely not going to go wrong with this phone. For storage, the A54 5G is getting 128GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion too, so we got plenty of storage here. For the average user, you're probably not going to fill all this up, and even if you get close, maybe you have like a lot of photos and videos for example, again this phone does have microSD card expansion, so we are getting some flexibility there. For security features, the A54 5G does have face unlock, like pretty much any Samsung Galaxy A series phone, as well as a really nice in-display fingerprint scanner. So let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go, so real fast and responsive there, no issues at all. Now for the camera setup, with the A54 5G, up front, we got a nice looking hole punch design for the selfie camera. This camera is 32 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. For video, this phone can also record 4K videos on both the rear and front cameras, so definitely nice there. In general, when it comes to the overall camera setup with this phone for what it is, I really have no complaints here. The features are great, not only can it record 4K videos, but it also has an ultra wide camera and a macro camera. And as far as the actual photo quality goes, for more of a mid range device, the A54 5G is definitely one of the better options. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. And yeah, again, I definitely do think the photo quality here is great. For the average user, I feel like this is pretty much as good as anyone's really gonna need. If you're doing stuff like Instagram posts, for example, or maybe you're taking pictures for some sort of business purpose, or more casual stuff like Snapchat, no matter what you're doing, the photo quality we get with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G is most likely gonna be perfectly fine for you. And again, for video, having the option to record 4K videos and not only the rear camera, but also the front facing camera too, is definitely nice. So if you're maybe making a vlog, for example, and you want to get that higher resolution, having that option on this phone is definitely a nice thing. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, we are getting 6 gigabytes of RAM with the Exynos 1380 processor. When it comes to overall performance, the A54 5G is actually pretty impressive. Now compared to a higher end device like a Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, for example, it's not going to be quite that fast, but for normal daily use, for things people are typically using smartphones for, it is going to be plenty fast enough and compared to the average mid-range phone, I would say in general, the A54 5G is definitely one of the faster options. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 6, and here are the results I got. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and then comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of where this phone stands performance-wise compared to your current device, because depending on what you have, it may or may not actually be faster. But in general, I would say compared to the average mid-range phone, the performance we get with the A54 5G is definitely impressive. For the battery, like every newer Samsung Galaxy A series phone, the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G has a 5000 mAh battery, and it also supports 25 watt fast charging, so definitely a great battery here. When it comes to charging speed, it does charge pretty fast, but keep in mind, to actually use the full 25 watt fast charging, you will need an actual 25 watt fast charger. And keep in mind, this phone does not come with a wall adapter, so you will actually have to get one. But in general, yeah, with this phone, the charging speed is great, and of course, with a 5000 mAh battery, you can expect to get some great battery life and longevity here. For the software, the A54 5G does have Android 13, and knowing Samsung software support, you can also expect to get several other major updates with it in the future. So if having the latest version of Android is important to you, then this phone is definitely going to be a great choice. In addition to this, the A54 5G also has NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you'll be happy to know you can do that with this phone no problem. But unfortunately, one thing this phone doesn't have is a headphone jack. So if you do have a pair of normal wired headphones you want to use, to use them on this phone, you will need an adapter. Now another thing I do want to point out about this phone is that despite being more of a mid-range device, the design and materials are actually surprisingly premium. The phone actually does have aluminum sides, which is always a nice thing, and the back is made of a glass. And this was a nice surprise, considering I have seen higher-end phones than this that have plastic backs instead. Now, sure, if you're going to be using a case, 
this is really not going to matter a whole lot, but getting nice materials and really good build quality is never a bad thing. So if you are looking for a phone that has a really quality, more premium design while still being pretty affordable, then you're not going to be disappointed with this phone. Up next, we got the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Now this phone actually has a decent amount in common with the A54 5G, but it's a little bit lower end, a little bit more simple, and quite a bit more affordable. In fact, through Metro, I've actually seen some really good deals on this phone. So if you are maybe considering switching to Metro and you're looking for a more affordable, more basic device that still has some nice quality and great features, then the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is definitely worth considering. Now with this phone, we're getting a decently large 6.6 .6 inch PLS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 400, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. Also keep in mind, this phone does have a 90Hz refresh rate, which makes the movement on the screen a bit faster and smoother, giving it a nice premium touch. Not quite as high as the 120Hz we get with the A54 5G, but honestly, in real life, you're not really going to see the difference between the two that much, and compared to a 60Hz refresh rate, it still does feel a little bit more premium. Now, in general, for what it is, the A14 5G actually has a pretty impressive display. I want to say most entry-level 5G phones under $200, which this phone is even at full price, typically only have 720p displays, but again, with the A14 5G, the resolution is 1080p, so we got a nice, sharp, crisp image here, and everything does look really good. In addition to this, at 6.6 .6 inches with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, the size and dimensions are also really good too. So if you're consuming a lot of content, maybe you're watching lots of videos, or maybe playing games or something like that, you will get a real nice experience with with this phone. Now for storage, with A14 5G, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So on one hand, 64 gigabytes isn't really a whole lot of storage. So if you are someone who's constantly downloading all kinds of new apps and games and stuff like that, and maybe you have a ton of photos and videos, which I guess you can offload that onto a micro SD card pretty easily. So that's probably not going to be a problem either way. But in general, if you are more of a heavy user, you might want to go with like the A54 5G instead. It has 128 gigabytes because again, 64 while being a good amount is really not a ton of storage. Storage. But at the same time, for the average user, as long as you're mindful of what you're putting on your phone, it should be at least okay. For security features, the A14 5G does have face unlock, as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. So definitely a convenient spot for it, but let's go ahead and give it a try. There we go. One more time. And there we go. So real fast and responsive. No issues at all. And then for the camera, up front, we got a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So unfortunately no ultra wide camera here, but feature wise, the A14 5G has pretty much everything else. And when it comes to the main camera, for what it is, the photo quality is really good. So if you are looking for a more affordable device, but you do like to take nice pictures, you're definitely not going to go wrong with this phone. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. So again, real good photo quality here. Maybe not quite as good as a much higher end device, but Again, keep in mind, even at full price, this phone is still under $200, so you can really only expect so much. But even with that being said, I feel like compared to even a lot of more expensive phones, the camera we get here really does hold its own. So in general, for more casual daily use, this camera is probably going to be perfectly fine for most people. For the RAM and processor, with the A14 5G, we're getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. So definitely a pretty common processor to see in a phone like this, and it is pretty well optimized on this phone. So overall, while not being the fastest device ever. The performance we're getting here is pretty good. For more casual daily use, like things like web browsing, social media, watching videos, and maybe playing a few games here and there, it will get the job done just fine. Now, if you are more of a power user, if you're doing more demanding activities like high performance mobile gaming, or if you're just going to be on your phone all the time, in that case, you might see it struggle a little bit. And if you are planning on using your phone like that, you might want to get something a bit faster. But I would say in general, for more average use, this phone will be fast enough to give you a pretty good experience. Now here are the results I got in Geekbench 6. So overall for what it is, definitely not bad. Not exactly what I would call exceptional, but at the same time again, for more basic daily use, it will definitely get the job done. For the battery, the A14 5G has a 5000 mAh battery, and this phone also supports 15 watt fast charging. So the charging speeds are pretty good, not really the best, but it gets the job done. And again with a 5000 mAh battery, just like with the A54 5G, the A14 5G is going to have great battery life. So if that is an important thing for you, then this phone is going to be a great option too. For the software, the A14 5G does have Android 13, and again, with Samsung software support, you can definitely expect several other major updates in the future. So if the software is important to you, then this phone, or really any newer Samsung phone for that matter, is probably going to be one of the better options for you. The A14 5G also does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you won't have to worry about that with this phone either. 
Up next, we got the TCL Stylus 5G. If you ever find yourself looking for a phone that has a stylus, but is also affordable, and you want some options besides the Motorola Moto G Stylus, then this phone is definitely worth considering. With the TCL Stylus 5G, we're getting a really large 6.81 inch IPS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 395, and a 20.5 by 9 aspect ratio. So as you can probably tell, the TCL Stylus 5G is the largest phone in this video, and with a 20.5 by 9 aspect ratio, it also has a really tall and narrow form factor. So in general, if you do tend to like larger displays, then this phone will be a great choice for you. And not only do we have great size and dimensions here, but with the 1080p resolution, we are getting a real sharp image in, in general with really any TCL phone, you can expect to get really good image quality. I mean, TCL is mainly a TV company and they pretty much put the same technology into their phones, so no surprise that things do look good. For storage, the TCL Stylus 5G is getting 128GB of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so plenty of storage here. Most people are probably not going to need more than this, but even if you do, the micro SD card expansion, of course, will give you some flexibility. For security features, the TCL Stylus 5G does have face and lock and a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key, so again, definitely a great spot for it. Let's give it a try. There we go. One more time. And there we go. So real fast. For the camera, up front, we got a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So overall, when it comes to features, the TCL Stylus 5G has pretty much everything. The only thing it's missing is being able to record 4K videos, but this phone is under $300 and in this price range, that feature is definitely not common. But aside from that, the TCL Stylus 5G has pretty much every feature you could expect in a mid-range phone, including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera. So if you do want some flexibility in your camera setup, then you won't be disappointed here. And when it comes to photo quality, this phone doesn't disappoint either. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the TCL Stylus 5G. So real good quality here, and combined with having a bunch of different features. Overall, if you're looking for an affordable mid-range phone and you like to take a bunch of pictures, you're definitely not going to go wrong with the TCL Stylus 5G. Now for the RAM and processor, with the TCL Stylus 5G, we're getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. So yeah, same processor as the A14 5G, definitely a common one you're going to see in a lot of different entry-level 5G phones, and that's really not a bad thing because for what it is, the performance we're getting here is actually pretty good. Here are the scores I got on Geekbench 6, so yeah, pretty much the same range I got on the A14 5G. Again, for more basic daily activities like web browsing, social media, watching videos, you can really do as much of that stuff as you want, and with this phone you're not going to get any performance issues, but again if you are doing more demanding activities like high performance mobile gaming, or maybe your expectations are a bit higher, maybe you're coming from an older flagship phone for example, that is most likely much faster than this. In that case, yeah, you might be a little let down here, but in general for the average user, for a mid-range phone, the performance we're getting here is definitely good. Now for the battery, the TCL Stylus 5G has a 4000 mAh battery that supports 18 watt fast charging, so yeah, it's a bit behind the previous two. So if the battery life is really a main factor for you, you might not want to go with this phone, but I will say say in my experience, objectively the actual battery life on this phone is definitely not terrible. Sure it's not the best, but if you're around a charger for a decent amount of time during the day, you're most likely still not going to have any problems, I mean, the 18 watt fast charging will help with that too. So in general, if the battery isn't the most important thing for you, then I would say this phone is definitely still worth considering. But of course, if you really want the best battery you can get for the money, then this phone of course will not be it. Now for the software, the TCL Stylus 5G does have Android 12, which is not bad, but at the same time, considering any Samsung Galaxy A series phone at this point is going to have Android 13, if you really want the latest software, there are definitely other options out there. But that being said, if you're not really that concerned about the software, then keep in mind at this point in 2023, there are still plenty of phones in this price range that have Android 12. In fact, outside of Samsung, I want to say most of them still do. And while I'm not 100% sure whether or not TCL is actually going to give this phone an update to Android 13, it is possible. So at the end of the day, if the software is really not a priority for you, then I do think this phone is still at least worth considering. But of course, if you do want Android 13, then you will want to get something else. When it comes to other features, the TCL Stylus 5G does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you'll be happy to know you can do that with this phone. And then of course, as the name suggests, the Stylus 5G does actually have a stylus. Big surprise, right? Definitely not the best stylus I've ever seen, but for what it is, it does get the job done, so if you like to make handwritten notes navigate through your home screen, maybe use it for like Fruit Ninja or something like that, it will definitely get the job done, but if you want to do actual art, of course, that's not really going to happen on this phone, but aside from that, when it comes to mid-range phone styluses, it's about on par with the Moto G stylus, maybe a little bit better or worse depending on your preference. It's decently sensitive too, so overall I have no complaints here. 
Up next, we got the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. So another nice mid-range phone from OnePlus. And I believe so far, this phone is actually exclusively through Metro, which of course is not gonna matter for this video, but still interesting all the same. Now with this phone, we're getting a 6.56 inch 90 hertz IPS LCD display with the 720p resolution, a PPI of 269, and a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So definitely an okay display. The downside of course is having a 720p resolution. It doesn't look bad, but compared to pretty much all the others in this video that have 1080p displays instead, it's not quite as good, so maybe if you're not consuming a ton of content where the image quality is more important, if you're just doing stuff like web browsing, some social media here and there, and maybe watching the occasional video every now and then, you will be okay. But if you really want the best image quality, then you can do better here. All in all though, I think the display here is at least decent, and for more casual use, which is really what it's meant for anyway, it will at least get the job done. For storage, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G is getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So just like with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, definitely not bad, but not the best either. So if storage is really a priority for you, then you might want to get something else. But in general, for the average user, it will at least get the job done. For security features, this phone does have face unlock and a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. Definitely a common spot for a fingerprint scanner, which I'm not complaining. It is a great spot for it, but let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. Now for the camera, with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, up front, we got a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a dual camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel depth sensing camera. Now, on one hand, as you can see, compared to pretty much all the others, the camera setup we're getting here is honestly pretty featureless. If you want an ultra wide camera or even a macro camera, you will be disappointed here. But I will say, the actual main camera really makes up for this because the photo quality we get with this phone is actually really good. And I know a lot of people out there don't really use the ultra wide camera or the macro camera. I know even for me personally, I rarely ever use the ultra wide camera anymore. Sure, the feature is definitely nice to have, but if you're just taking pictures for like Instagram, for example, you might end up using only the main camera or portrait mode. So if that is you, not having those features really won't be that bad. Now to give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. And yeah, great quality here. I really have no complaints. The colors, details, brightness, everything looks really good here. So again, if you're not really that concerned about having an ultra wide camera or a macro camera, and you really just wanna take a bunch of nice regular photos, then in that case, the camera we get with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G is honestly gonna be perfect for you. When it comes to RAM and processor, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G is getting four gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 810 processor. So another pretty good processor here. And the performance is also really good. It's not really gonna be significantly faster or slower than your average mid-range phone. In fact, it's pretty much about the same level as most other decent 5G phones in this price range. But regardless, it is definitely a decently fast device. So for more basic activities, it will get the job done just fine. Here are the scores I got on Geekbench 6. So as you can see, compared to the last two, it's pretty much the same ballpark park so I wouldn't really choose this phone over another one like it just for the speed because while definitely not being slower it's not really going to be faster either but for the average user looking for a more affordable 5G phone the OnePlus Nord N300 5G will be plenty fast enough. For the battery, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G has a 5,000 mAh battery that also supports 33 watt fast charging, giving it the best charging speed of any other phone in this video. So if charging speed is really important to you and you also want a really large battery, then the OnePlus Nord N300 5G will be a great choice. And unlike every other phone in this video, not only do we get a wall adapter with this phone, but it's actually a 33 watt fast charger. So to actually use the full charging speed here, you don't even have to go buy anything special because it does come with it already. Now those other two Samsungs do have really good batteries too, but not only is the battery in the OnePlus the same size, but the fast charging is so much better. So while this might not matter to everyone, if the battery is really important to you, then this will be one of the better options here. Now for the software, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G does currently have Android 12, which just like the TCL is not the best, but at the same time, it's acceptable. And I personally feel like eventually this phone will get an update to Android 13. I mean, it's a OnePlus phone. I can't imagine it not getting it. But if software support is really important to you, then you might want to stick with like a Samsung. But in general, while using this phone, I haven't had any performance issues. So if you're not really that concerned about having the latest version of Android at all times, then this phone still will be perfectly fine. And then this phone also does have NFC too. So you can use tap and pay with it. And then finally, we got the Google Pixel 6a. Now I feel like this is really one of the best deals here because despite being a bit higher end than pretty much all these other phones. Right now, the Google Pixel 6a is going for around $329 unlocked on Amazon. And depending on where you're looking, you can find even better deals in other places. So if you are looking for a bit more of a flagship kind of experience, but you still don't want to spend $1,000 on the top of the line phone, then this phone is definitely a great compromise. Now with the Google Pixel 6a, 
we're getting a 6.1 inch OLED display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 429, and a 20x9 aspect ratio. So you'll notice right away, this is the smallest phone here despite being a bit higher end, but I feel like that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know a lot of people out there actually prefer a slightly more compact phone, and while it's definitely nice to have a giant display like the TCL Stylus 5G, at times, having a smaller 6.1 inch display can definitely be a nice thing too. And at this point in 2023, I wanna say the average phone is around six and a half inches, so if you do want a more compact device, finding a slightly higher end device that's a bit more compact is a bit harder than it used to be. And aside from being a bit smaller, the image quality here is really good too. With an OLED display, we're gonna get great looking colors. It's pretty similar to the Super AMOLED on the A54 5G in a way. The viewing angles compared to the IPS LCDs that pretty much all these other phones have are gonna be quite a bit better. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, this phone is still gonna be pretty easy to see. So if you do have to spend a lot of time outside, this is definitely something to think about. In general, I feel like the content consumption experience on this phone, despite again having a slightly smaller display, is still gonna be pretty good. I mean, Personally for me, I have an iPhone 13 that has the same exact size and I watch all kinds of videos on it. And if you're coming from a really large display and you move to this, it might feel kind of weird at first, but I feel like it's pretty easy to get used to. So in general, if you are looking for a phone that has a really nice display, the Google Pixel 6a will be a great choice. For storage, this phone does have 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but unfortunately, unlike the previous phones, this phone does not have micro SD card expansion. Now, I feel like 128 gigabytes for that average user is gonna be plenty of storage anyway, but of course, if you really do want use a micro SD card, then you might want to skip this phone. For security features, also unlike the other phones, the Google Pixel 6a does not have face unlock, but it does have a pretty nice in-display fingerprint scanner. So let's try it out. There we go. One more time. And there we go. So real fast and responsive. Kind of too bad that it doesn't have face unlock, but I feel like most people prefer a fingerprint scanner anyway, so it might not be that big a deal. For the camera, up front, we got an 8 megapixel selfie camera, then on the back, we got a dual camera setup with a 12.2 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And also keep in mind for video, this phone can record 4K videos in the rear camera, but it maxes out at 1080p in the front. Now, overall, I do want to point out here, despite having lower megapixels than pretty much every other camera in this video, the Google Pixel 6a actually has the best photo quality here. The reason for that is because this phone, being more of a high-end device, is going to have a much better sensor. So first of all, like the A54 5G, it doesn't need a depth sensing camera, so portrait mode still does work perfectly fine, and in general, having a better sensor will make the photos look quite a bit better, despite only having a 12.2 megapixel camera. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Google Pixel 6a. And yeah, I would definitely say compared to all the other phones in this video, the photo quality here is really the best. So if you are looking for a really affordable phone that has essentially a flagship level camera, then the Google Pixel 6a is going to be a great option. When it comes to RAM and processor, this phone has 6GB of RAM with the Google Tensor processor. Now when it comes to performance, this is actually the fastest phone in this video. It really does give you flagship level performance, maybe not like iPhone or Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra level, but it still definitely is a really fast device. So no matter what you're doing on it, it is going to get the job done just fine. So if you're going to be on your phone a lot, doing more demanding activities like I don't know, playing Call of Duty for example, you will get a great experience here. Now on Geekbench 6, here are the scores I got. So as you can see, even compared to the A54 5G, which was pretty fast to begin with, the Google Pixel 6a is still significantly faster. So again, if performance is really one of the main factors for you, then I would definitely consider going with this phone. Now with this phone, despite the camera and overall performance being way ahead of the others, when it comes to the battery, that's really not the case. With the Google Pixel 6a, we're getting a 4410 mAh battery that supports 18 watt fast charging. So on one hand, is it terrible? Definitely not. For the average user, it will at least last. But at the same time, if you want a super good battery, then you might want to go with something like the A54 5G instead. In my experience, the battery will at least get you through the day, depending on how much you're using it, but you will have to charge it at some point. So if you are in a situation where you're really not around a charger during the day, with this phone, you might run into some problems. But in my experience, the charging speed is at least pretty good. So if you are around a charger for a decent amount of time, then you should be okay here. Now with the Google Pixel 6a, we are getting Android 13, and seeing as it is a Google phone, you can also expect a few other major updates in the future. So just like the Samsungs, if the software is important to you, the Google Pixel 6a will be another great choice. And this phone also does have NFC, so you can easily use like Google Pay or any contactless mobile payment service you want. But just like the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, unfortunately, the Google Pixel 6a does not have a headphone jack. So again, if you do want to use wired headphones with this phone, you are going to need an adapter. But those were my top 5 phones you can use on Metro's network at this point in 
2023. In general, Metro has a lot of great options, and these by far are not the only ones. So if you have a different phone, definitely let me know in the comments and let me know if there's a different phone you think I should have included instead of one of these. And again, if you want to learn more about any of these phones individually, I do actually have a lot of videos about all of them, which I will be linking to in the description, along with information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalibus Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.